All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some um, antiderivatives of some basic trig functions. So we've already looked at the power rule. So we've got to make sure we include our trig. We've got to love that. <coughs> so, um, you know, like I said before, an antiderivative is essentially a function that when you come up with it, if you take the derivative of it, it becomes this guy right here. So we have to think, okay, what function, when we take the derivative of it, becomes sine of x? So um, since the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, um, this antiderivative is actually going to be negative cosine x plus c. Since when you take the derivative of cosine, it's a negative sine, and that negatives will cancel to make that positive. Okay? Um, right here, think of what function we take the derivative becomes cosine of x. It's just sine of x plus c for secant squared. We have to think, when we take the what function we take the derivative is secant squared. So it's tangent x plus c, and the same things apply here. So the antiderivative of secant tangent x is just going to be secant x plus c. This one here, um, we have to think of, okay, the, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So kind of similar to this guy up here, this is going to be negative um, cotangent. Negative cotangent x plus c. And the last guy down here, it's going to end up being negative cosecant x plus c. So those right there are the uh, kind of basic trig functions. As you go through calculus, you definitely will learn um, more antiderivatives uh, of trig functions. But uh, for right now, um, this is a good start. This is uh, kind of all we have the rules uh, to work with. So let's just kind of see how we can apply this in a problem. Just do a couple basic examples. Say you had something like this. Say we have uh, um, 3x squared minus 2 cosine x dx, okay? So for the antiderivative of this, you just do the antiderivative of each term separately. So the antiderivative of 3x squared, using the um, power rule, we add one to the exponent, divide by 3, so the 3's cancel. So it ends up being um, 3x cubed over 3, but like I said, you can just cancel the 3's out. Um, just like with the power rule, those constants go along for the ride. So in this case, that constant in front of cosine is just going to go along for the ride. The antiderivative of cosine is just sine. So, right that here. And then plus c. And I don't think I mentioned before, but notice the dx when you take the antiderivative just does go away. It's not there anymore. Okay, so, you know, that's a basic antiderivative problem. Let's look at one more real quick. And be done with this kind of stuff. Um, let's say we had... Um, Oh, 5 minus um, 7 cosecant squared of x. Okay, so you just look at the uh, antiderivative of each individual term, just like that one. The antiderivative of 5 is going to be 5x, because any constant, when you take the antiderivative, you just add the x with it. So then this, this constant, negative 7, that goes along for the ride. The antiderivative of cosecant squared is negative cotangent x. So you know, the antiderivative there is negative cotangent x plus c. Now we could go ahead and simplify that, of course, and have it 5x. These negatives would cancel. It'll be plus 7 cotangent x plus c. And I did simplify this one up here, but you could definitely just cancel those threes out. So there's some uh, trig antiderivatives.